Hello, book art friends. Today, I want you to pull out this packet, According Spine, three pamphlet signature book. So what we're gonna start is a hybrid book of a pamphlet and an accordion binding. We're gonna be doing two in total, but this one is going to focus on having an accordion spine and sewing on pamphlets within the accordion. So this will all make sense soon. This is one that I have that's incomplete that I can show you. Basically, my cover is off that one, but this has an accordion spine here, right? Forgive this, it got torn off. Um, if we look at it this way, we can also see that this is an accordion. It's fine itself. On the accordion, we have sewn on pamphlets, all right? So we have a pamphlet here, we have a pamphlet here, and we have a pamphlet here. There are all sorts of different ways you could do this. You could have a lot of them, certainly. We're gonna have three. We are going to be sewing in the valley exclusively, but this, this one has an example of different sized pages. So this one is sewn into the valley. This is sewn into the peak, right? And this one is sewn into the valley as well. So what does that mean? That means that this has to be shorter if all of this stuff lines up. For our purposes today, all of our pamphlets are going to be the same size, but um, just keep in mind that the sky's the limit in terms of the variations that you might want to explore. Last time, we made a little pamphlet like this. This was the one we didn't demo. This is just another one I have around. Just to refresh your memory, a pamphlet is a one signature or one section book. This was made with a soft cover. What we're gonna to make today is gonna to have a hard cover. This is the handout that I gave you. It is basically on pamphlet book variations. This first page describes exactly what we did in our last demo. And then moving on in here, we start talking about variations. And so there's some variations here, variations here that you might wanna play around with. Um, this is a do-si-do -si -do or a Z-fold, which is not something I don't think that we're demoing, but it's something I wanna to talk to you about once we get all this done. It might be something that you wanna explore on your own because conceptually it's a very interesting thing. It's basically a book that is a book from both sides. So it, there's the um, accordion is like a Z shape and you sew in a pamphlet on one side, sew in a pamphlet on another. I've had some students that have made some really interesting books kind of talking about two sides of an issue using this structure, and it's a very good structure for that. All right, down to business. So let's see what we have. Let's do a little inventory. We have two pieces of Davy board. We have the stiff paper that we're gonna use for our accordion. It's a only folded in half so I could fit it into the envelope. So there it is. We have a little piece of uh, paper for our jig. We have paper for our pamphlets and we have some decorative paper for the cover. Now, one thing I wanna mention, if you prefer to use some other kind of decorative paper, uh, you have something that you like and you wanna use that instead of what I provided you with, that's fine, that's perfectly fine. Um, I had a student that was missing a piece of decorative paper in our class and I'm gonna leave some decorative paper for her, certainly, but if she wanted to, she could have used like a magazine if she didn't have any like wrapping paper around or something like that. Um, anything, really, just to do the dummy because the dummy is not, it's not aesthetically important. I just choose materials that I really like um, because, you know, life is too short not to have things that you really love if you can have them in your reach. All right, first thing I want us to do, we're gonna make three pamphlet folds, or rather three folds of five papers each for our first pamphlet. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. I think I provided you with at least two different colors, maybe three, I'm not sure. You can do this any way you want. They can all be the same color. They can be different colors. They can be a mix, like it could be, you know, one green page, one yellow page, etc. Whatever you like, it's totally up to you. So I'm gonna take these, and because they're thin enough, 
I am going to fold them all at once. We talked a little bit about that last week. I'm gonna really be careful about getting them together at the edges. I'm gonna hold this, I'm gonna flatten this in the middle with my bone folder and I'm gonna flatten out from the middle. And it looks pretty good. All right, so that's one. I'm gonna do another. You probably have more paper than you need. Hmm, so this is four sheets. So maybe I'll make the green as two sections. One, two, three, four, five. And you know what? The reason I've chosen five pages is simply because it's thin enough to sew through easily. If you wanted to have six pages, fine. Seven pages, you might get a little bulky. Four pages, you know, whatever you want. It's, it's fine. As long as this doesn't start to become really thick, when you have a really thick signature, it's hard to, uh, to manage, and you're better off starting a new signature. When I say signature, I'm talking about sections of books or sections of pages that have been bound together. So wait a minute, one, two, three, no, that's four, five. Okay, so I've got some extra paper. Jog my pages together, try to keep them as even as possible. And again, if you have a thicker paper, you're gonna have to uh, fold all of the pieces of paper individually because it'll just become unwieldy to, uh, to try to fold them all at once. It'll become a mess. All right, so I've got these ready to go. Now I'm going to make this structure here. Now this, let's make sure this is the same. This is my kind of dummy. Here's my piece of paper, it's the same size. So what I have here, if we're gonna compare it, is I have this midpoint already. So that should be provided for you, but you know how to fold a piece of paper in half. So this is just folded in half, and that's all there is to it. Now it gets slightly more complicated. I made this, so essentially, I could glue this down completely and perfectly onto my Davy board. So that required some measuring. You don't have to do that. You could have just a tab here. This is gonna be stronger though, and it's going to serve a different kind of aesthetic purpose for me. I like this being continuous. Um, a little tab I probably would need to cover with another piece of decorative paper, and so that just, stay, that just saves me this step, figuring this out in advance. So this is the width of this book here. I know that it needs to come all the way to the edge, but then I want it to be smaller on all sides a little bit. Seems like mine is slightly wide. Eh, it's okay. Um, so how did I figure that out? This is the height of the pages. The book height, or rather the cover height, is a quarter of an inch more. So what was this? This is probably five and a half, because that seems pretty standard in terms of this photocopy paper. Let me use my other ruler because I think it'll show up better for you. So what do I have here? Five and a half, I do. And so I believe that these boards are five and three quarters. Yes, and that's what they are. So that generally is something that you can stick with if you are thinking about making your own book, which of course you should be. This should be about a quarter of an inch larger than this or the pages themselves if you want to have a little indentation that protects the book block. All right, back on track. I measured this out in advance and this is something I'll show you that you can do as well. I wanted to measure it because on this side, I wanted to have three valleys where I would be sewing in my pamphlets. So the measuring is gonna happen on the back side. You can erase it afterwards if you like, or you can just not indulge yourself with putting all of these marks here. I did that so that I could demonstrate it, so I could show you. All right, I'm opening this up, and each one of these little sections here is three quarters of an inch. So three quarters of an inch. Hello, hello. Let me uh, get my bone folder. And I'm just gonna line this up. And remember why we love these rulers is we can put a little line here at the top, little line where the crease is, and we know we are square. 
It is harder to read on a ruler like this where three quarters of an inch is. This is a full inch, right? So it is divided one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight into eight little sections. So one of these is an eighth of an inch. So in half here, if we go one, two, we have three quarters, all right? So essentially this little section here, two little lines is uh, a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna bring it back to that. It's kind of hard to see. Let me try it again. There we go. Lining it up. Okay, this should be three quarters of an inch. Let's compare it. Yes, I measured okay. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And basically all of it is three quarters of an inch. So, right? So if we start counting this up, this is gonna be another three quarters, this is gonna be another three quarters. So essentially this is an inch and a half from this midpoint. This whole section here is three inches wide in total. I'm gonna use my other ruler, I just like it better. I can see better with it. And you know, I've got those middle-aged eyes. Um, okay, three quarters of an inch. Oh my goodness. right boop, boop, boop. and this whole thing should be three inches so all right now these are all my little fold marks okay so this tells me where I'm gonna be folding I could start here I could start here it doesn't really matter as long as I am making nice folds and as I do this look it's not lining up so I'm gonna make it line up all right my measuring might have been slightly off and it's more important that I adhere to the actual material than what I might have measured and not measured absolutely perfectly. All right, there's that fold. Hello, fold. Hello, Carson. All right, flatten. Now we need to fold these little fellows. I saw this, uh, dog on the street as I was walking over here. I'm in my studio and it was, I guess it was a Pomeranian, which are seriously cute dogs. But this one had been, had a haircut so that it looked like a little lion. So it had like a big mane around its head and then it was short everywhere else. Oh my goodness, it was so cute. I thought I was gonna die. I've seen rabbits you know, long-haired rabbits with a lion cut like that. And oh my goodness. I don't know if it happened. I mean, maybe it happens naturally with rabbits. I, don't, I really don't know. But obviously with this Pomeranian, it did not. Hmm, this is a little off. I'm going to see if I can fix it. That looks good. Aha! I can see where I didn't fold that perfectly. So listen, here I am, an old hand at this stuff, right? And I still need to check my work to make sure that what I'm doing is as accurate as I possibly can make it. So I'm no exception and you are no exception to this. We're all just gonna do the very best we can, but craftsmanship is important. So I'm not dependent upon the fact that I'm gonna do it perfectly just because, you know, I think I'm perfect. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna check, 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 check to see what I've done. You know what, I've screwed it up again. Oh. Oh, oh self-loathing. Okay, there, that's better. I'm, I corrected this. So this is what I corrected. I kept folding it so that these weren't lining up. And I'm not sure where that problem originated from, but I fixed it and that's, you know, all we really care about. Okay, this is gonna be my spine. The part that we're sewing into is here, here, and here. So the valley here, here, and here. So there are three valleys for me to sew in, two, and I have my uh, pamphlets, and they should fit in here nicely, which they do, right? Like so. So all of my pamphlets are the same size because they're all in the valleys. However, if I wanted to sew on the peak, on the mountain, on the peak here, I could 
subtract, let's see, that was three quarters of an inch. I think three quarters of an inch I would need to cut off of my pages if I wanted them all to line up. Maybe I don't want them to all line up. Maybe I want them to be all sorts of different sizes and that could be really interesting too. I would just have to figure out my book cover so that it would accommodate it properly. All right, let's get moving. We are going to now do a three hole sewing in here. So we know how to make this, but I'm gonna walk you through this already. So I'm, this is the same height as the book, right? Or as the pages themselves. Let me show you that better right there. And so what I wanna do is find three holes that are evenly spaced. And I like to do that by folding as opposed to measuring, because I find that folding is actually more accurate than me measuring. So I'm folding this in half to find the middle. All right, hello middle, there it is. Okay, now I need to find the middle of these two sides. So I'm gonna fold this in half. All right. And then fold the other side in half. And now I know where I'm gonna be putting my marks. Remember before I marked the, um, the head and the foot. Right? I'm gonna mark these so you can see them better. I can see them, but you need to see them too. Okay, I could leave it just as this, or I could cut little notches, which I like to do in my thing here. And I'm cutting these little itty bitty notches so that the pointy part of the notch is on the line. What's most important is simply that I am consistent with the way I lay this down. Even if I'm off just a wee bit, if I'm off a wee bit, but consistently, then, you know, it all works out fine. All right, I am gonna use my cradle, but remember, you can poke your holes in by simply holding this up. Depends on if you're left-handed or right-handed. I would suggest, you know, if you're right-handed, you're gonna be doing it this way, and you're gonna go poke, poke, poke through all the holes. So I need to find my all. Where are you all? Hmm, there it is. There's the all. Okay, so maybe I'll do this one so that you can see it. And one of the things I like to do, let me find my ooh, my uh, clothespin here. Where are you, clothespin? Here it is. There it is. So I like to have something that holds this in place so I don't have it slipping around. So I'm gonna put this here. I've declared this is the head, this is the foot. I have opened my pages, jogged my pages together so that everything is even. This is right up against the crease. I'm gonna clip it into place and so that when I hold this up, I don't have to worry about anything moving around on me. All right, so I'm making these holes. I want the holes to go through the pages, but not so much that it becomes this big, ugly thing. So here they are, they're right on the crease. That's what I want. I'm gonna do the others. So this was the head. Sometimes, if you think you're gonna lose track of it, I'll put like just a tiny little pencil mark. You probably can't even see that at the top. Something that no one would notice that I can erase later so that I don't lose track of things. All right, now I'm gonna use my cradle. And I'm gonna turn this so you can see it. Jog that against the head of the cradle. And then this needs to be Towards the head too. Oh, where are you? Here's the all. I'm gonna push straight down. Straight down. All right, that one's ready to be sewn on. And maybe I'll make a little tiny itty bitty mark for my head. Boop. Where's the other section? There it is. I'm gonna do that also with my cradle. And I don't know how thorough I was with showing you how I made this. These are just two pieces of wood that I nailed together, essentially just bang, bang, bang at a 90 degree angle. And so that it wouldn't flop around, I hammered this towards the end of it. If you've taken 3D, you can master this, no problem. It'd be a piece of cake for you to make your own. And as long as it's as big as your pages, you're sitting pretty. It doesn't have to be as big as this. All right, 
all of my holes are in there. And remember, we're calling holes our stations. As we start doing more complicated sewings, I will refer to stations as one, two, three, four, et cetera. And so that might be something that you find really useful. All right, let's find our accordion cover. We're gonna do the same thing. So our holes or stations need to be along these spine areas. So this is my top or this is my head. I'm gonna make a little mark so I don't forget it. I'm gonna do it in my cradle. I'm gonna have to pull this out a little bit, that's okay. I can always pull it back. And I'm making them in the valley. On the peak? Well, on the peak if you turn it around, but you can't poke things into a peak very easily, right? So it needs to be the valley. Okay, so there's one valley. That's a peak, no holes. This is another valley, so I'm going to do this. So it's every other one. This is exciting stuff. I actually, I'm not being facetious. I think this is exciting stuff. I love making things. I can't wait to... Uh, to retire and become a little old lady that can just sit and make things all day long. I love teaching, but I love this stuff as well. I think I mentioned the last video that taking classes, you know, your education doesn't end when you finish school. You can be someone who learns new things constantly. And honestly, one of the reasons artists have such a long life expectancy is because they are constantly engaged in learning new things, most artists. And if that's the case, you know, you have a reason to get up every morning because, you know, the world has something to offer to you. And um, it keeps you alive. At least that's my theory. Artists typically either have very short lifespans or very long ones. And I would say, in my observation, long seems to be the norm. So I had a professor, um, Will Barnett, who was uh, 103 when he died. I saw him when he was 102. He was in a wheelchair, but that was the only year he was in a wheelchair. And I saw him at the print fair and there he was, sharp as a tack. And I was very sad to hear that he passed the year later, but you know what? If I got to 103, I would be, I'd, I'd see that as a real win. All right, I have some yellow thread out here, but I'm gonna look for my pink, which I think I can get easily enough. Yes, hello, pink thread, because I think you'll be able to see that better. All right, this is waxed just like your thread. So it's sort of, it has sort of a sticky feel, but what's nice about it is that you aren't going to uh, get it as tangly as easily. Now, I'm only doing one pamphlet each for each sewing, so I'm not continuously sewing these signatures on. If I were, and we will be doing that in some future uh, demonstrations, right? I would be measuring this for every signature, but as it stands, I'm doing these individually. So, I'm not gonna worry about measuring it too much. I think that you know, being as long as your arm is plenty, plenty, plenty. It's always better to have more thread that you have to, you know, cut off and waste than having too little, because too little is also another kind of waste because you have to start again. All right, threading my needle. This should be easy enough. But if it's not, I can always bite on the end so it flattens out. I'm gonna pull this forward so that I have a couple of inches, this maybe two, three inches. And then remember our little tricky trick. We are going to sew into the thread. So I'm gonna to try to stab, loop, into the thread. So I hope you can see that okay. So now I've sewn into the thread. This is threaded through the eye of the needle, right? And now this is stabbed in here. I'm gonna pull this little bit down over the eye of the needle. Yoink. Now I'm going to pull gently on this. 
boop, 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 until it stops at the needle's eye. So I haven't created a knot, but I have created a way for me to sew without this coming off the needle as I'm sewing and making me feel very frustrated. All right, so I think I'm gonna do the obvious here. I have two green sections, I have a yellow section. I'll put the green sections on the side. I'm gonna start sewing right here. I want my the head of this to, here's the head, little, little itty bitty dot. And there's my little bitty dot there, so I'm gonna do it on the side. I'm gonna line all of this up. The pages are the same size as the spine, right? This is, the spine is what you're sewing into. So this is the same height. I'm gonna use my clothespin or bull clip or whatever I have, and I'm going to clip it at the edge there. So this is in the crease, head is at the top, and now I'm gonna start sewing. Remember, wherever you start sewing is where you're gonna end. So the tie, you can decide if you want it on the outside or the inside. Typically, I start from the inside, but you can do whatever you like. I'm gonna do the first sewing that I showed you, which I think is the better one for pamphlets. So I'm gonna pull this through. Last demonstration for the pamphlet demonstration, I told you, showed you two different ways of sewing. Very subtle changes um, between the two sewing patterns. This is the one I prefer. So I'm gonna leave a little bit out here, right? Cause that's what I'm gonna need to use to tie later. I'm going to pop on over here and I'm gonna be careful that I'm not reckless with just stabbing my needle through here. I wanna ensure that as I go through the station, I'm going through the station, and then I'm also going through the holes of the, uh, of the pages and not creating new holes. So that might take a little bit of just, you know. In a perfect world, they'd line up so perfectly that you wouldn't have to think about this stuff. But we don't live in a perfect world. We live right here. Okay, I'm gonna hop on over here. I'm gonna make a boop, big leap, right, to the other side. Oh, and that lined up perfectly, that's nice. It's always satisfying when that happens. I'm gonna pull this tight, and then I'm gonna go through that middle hole again. So I've got two link stitches right here coming together. Now, once I get to this side, I still want to kind of pull this tight so that it isn't loose. I absolutely do not want it loose, but I don't want to be like <clears throat> where I break the, um, the pages. So just be gentle with your stuff, but firm. Now, I'm on this side. Both threads are on this side, so I don't want that. I want to just sew under this so one thread is on one side. So this is on this side, this is on this side. I'll make it more secure when I do my little knot, and then I'm gonna do another little knot, just to be sure it doesn't come loose. I'm going to trim this, and I like to trim things pretty short. Again, that's up to you, what you like. You're the artist, you make the final decisions about things. All right, so here we go. That's there. Yahoo, I'm on my way. So now I'm gonna do my yellow one. I'm gonna use pink thread again, although I can change my thread colors if I wanted. This is not long enough for me to really do a good sewing, so maybe I'll make my thread longer so I have to re-thread this. <sighs> so my dog got a haircut. And now, you know, he used to look like a big mop, right? And like a, he's black, so he looks like this big black mop. And I, I wouldn't be able to tell like where his head was, you know? He's just like this mass of fur. And I kind of liked it that way because he looked kind of wild and like a bear and I was into it. But then I went away for the day and my husband who likes things neat and tidy, I don't blame him, but he likes a dog all tidied up, so he took the dog to the groomer, and I came back, and the dog is still super cute, but he looks like a poodle now. He has a shortish fur, and um, he's got these long legs that I didn't know he had. He's a puppy, so a lot of this is just, you know, I'm watching him grow, and I don't really know what to expect. Now he looks like a colt. He looks like a, um, a newborn horse. All right, now I'm gonna sew this. 
keeping in mind, there's my little dot, there's my little dot there. I'm gonna erase that once I'm done, but it's just there as a little cheat for me so I don't mess up. And again, I'm starting from the middle. I'm gonna be sure that I'm actually going through holes and not making new ones. Pull this all the way through. All right, I'm leaving a little bit extra. I haven't had a dog in a long time. When my uh, son was born, I had old dogs, two very old dogs, and they both died of natural causes, just died of old age, because they were old. And um, when my son was a baby, I used to have to take the baby out, right, with the dogs when I would walk them, if I were alone in the house, which was often, and uh, wow, it was hard to walk two dogs and wheel a baby carriage. And I got real burnt out on that. And I was like, I'm just gonna deal with this kid. But now the kid's 11. And of course the kid, my son Finn, wants a dog because why wouldn't you want a dog if you were an 11 year old boy? So we got a dog. I haven't had a dog since, well, probably 10 years. And it's lovely. You know what, it's like, it's like guaranteed love. I come home and this dog is so excited to see me, he just shakes, his whole body shakes. And I really have to admire that, you know, cause he is committing to the emotion. And uh, maybe I'll take a little uh, cue from that. You know, we hold back so much. Maybe we should shake with emotion when we see someone we love, I don't know. He's so wonderful and just being generous with his uh, his love. You know, our dogs are so wonderful in that way. All right, lining this up. I'm doing my last one. I'm in the home stretch. All right. And now I have enough thread. Now, I was smart and made my thread a little longer so I could do two of these without having to re-thread my needle. So, I didn't really walk you through the last one, but I'm gonna walk you through this one, which is our last one. I'm sewing through the middle, because that's where my knot is gonna end up. I'm gonna leave a little tail here of about mm, two, three inches, something like that. I'm gonna go up or down, doesn't matter doesn't matter which way I go for this kind of sewing. I'm gonna push this through, I'm gonna make sure I'm going through a hole. There it is, wait, 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 where are you? I'm here, Carson Fox. There we go. Bring that through. Uh-oh, don't want that to go away. Tight, but not so tight it rips the pages. Jumping over to the other side, sewing through. Oh good, the holes line up perfectly. Yay! All right, sewing through here. Nice long stitch here in the middle. Going to the back, sewing through the middle. Ideally, I want to be on both sides of this long stitch, so I'm going to take my needle and just simply put myself in that place so that this is like a T or an X, depending on how you want to think about it. I want this to be tight, but not ripping. And now I'm making a knot and another knot. You might notice I have little bites all over my hands. That is not from something disgusting. It is from a small poodle dog who has teeth, like little tiny steak knives. It's like a little shark, this thing. God bless him. I can't wait for him to grow out of that stage though. Because the bites, the bites are fierce. All right, so look at this. We have our cording binding, three pamphlets sewn on. Ta -da! Very exciting stuff. So I'm gonna close this up, I'm gonna put it aside, and now I'm going to cover my baby board. We know how to do this, but let's get our newspaper under here so we don't get things glue everywhere. So, Davy board. Where did I put my decorative paper? Here it is, decorative paper. I'm gonna remind you, when you are covering board, you must have enough paper around here to cover comfortably. 
So that has to be at least a half inch. And I think here I pretty much gave myself an inch on all sides. This is a little bit wider, but about an inch. So that's all I'm worried about. So I'm placing this in the middle. Remember the height of this was five and three quarters. That was a quarter more than my book block or my pages, right? So if this is five and three quarters and I added an inch on all sides, this would be a piece of paper, seven and three quarters. And this would be, this is four, I wanna say this is four and a quarter. Let's see what it is. Maybe it's four and a half actually, now that I think about it. Yeah, it's four and a half. So, quarter inch more than the pages themselves. So that would make this theoretically six and a half, okay? So I added an inch on each side. I'm telling you this stuff because you are gonna have to design your own books, right? And there are conventions like this that you can adhere to to make your own perfect, wonderful, professional, beautifully crafted books. So I'm looking for my other piece of Davy board because I'm going to use that as a measuring tool. I'll put that at the corner. Yoink! Little diagonal line there. Boop! Some folks do an angle, right? Um, meaning, this is a certain angle and this is a certain angle. It's not just straight across. I've taken a number of book binding courses and it depends on the teacher, really. I think this looks just as nice and is considerably less fussy. And so I'm of this school. I'm gonna cut off the edges. Remember, I'm not cutting on the line. I'm cutting just right of the line because I need this to be one and a half times the thickness of this board in order to have this cover nicely. So I'm gonna just cut a little bit to the right of it. I'm gonna use my other scissors. These are crazy big scissors, right? Looks like I'm gonna go on a, I don't know, a cutting spree? Yes, that's a lot more gentle than something else. All right. Cut, 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 cut. Cut, 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 cut. All right, so that's one piece. I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the other. And you know, if this isn't perfectly even, it really doesn't matter that much because the edges are gonna get covered with this, the accordion spine. So I made it large enough so that it would act as the end paper for this book. What is the end paper? The end paper is the decorative piece of paper that goes on top of this on the inside. So the pretty side is on the other side. This side is gonna show some baby board here. And in order to conceal that, you need an end paper, something that covers it up. Cutting to the right of this again with my super big long scissors. Cut. That's a little wide. Hmm. I could trim it a little more. Cut. All right. I had this fantasy I could bring the dog to the studio, but it's just not going to work out because the kid, the kid, the dog eats everything. He bites everything. So I have all kinds of weird things in the studio. Lots of dust, too. I shouldn't have some wild dog getting into. All right, my glue stick. Look at my other glue stick, this one's all stuck. All right, I don't know what's happening with that, but some glue got in there. Okay, just a refresher on gluing. Like the rays of the sun radiating out from the middle. Now, if you have a really big piece of paper, you may actually have to do this in parts meaning your glue may dry up before you get to one part. Now, that's not something we have to worry about. We should be able to act fast enough to do this with no problem. So I'm aiming to have 
a uniform continuous layer of glue here. Um, this blob that you see over here is not ideal, so I might just sort of scoop that off. I don't want glue that squirts out the edges. Got my Davy board. I'm gonna plop it in the middle. All right. I am going to use the paper to do the fold. I'm gonna fold this over. Yoink. Normally I do the top and bottom. To be honest, it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. Meaning, I usually fold over this and then this. For some reason I did the side and now I'm committing to it because I can't go back. All right. Remember we have this little overhang here at the corners, right? This little bit. We're gonna smoosh it down towards the inside with our bone folder. Smoosh! So see, I'll, I'll hold that up so you can look at it again. I know we've done this before, but I like to show things multiple times because I feel like I need to see things multiple times. So why not you guys? Okay, see how that's folded in? Now I'm gonna just check, make sure my glue is still sticky. And it is, so I'm gonna fold that over. There it is, looking good. And I'm going to fold this one over. Woohoo! Nice. Look at that. That is a work of art. All right, so there's my cover. Now I need to, to do the exact same thing for the other one. I have this ready to go. I've got my glue stick. Boop, 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 boop. I'm moving little blobs around. That's what you see when I'm doing this. Has glue on it so I don't want to use it. I'm putting this on a nice clean paper. I'm putting this, I'm positioning it where it should be. All right, and I'm going to keep consistent with what I did before, so I'm going to do the sides first. All right, if I can, I'm always using the paper to do the folding because my fingers may have a little bit of residual glue on it, and this way I can keep things clean. Smushing the corners, smush, towards the inside, smush, smush, and more smush. Pull that over. Notice I'm really like pressing it down. You wanna use the glue while it's still wet. You wanna have to come back and go, uh-oh, and then try to like get glue underneath your edges. There's a tool, a little spatula that you can use for that, but if you can avoid doing it, you want to avoid doing it. This, I'm just putting this on top of here so I can really flatten things out. Sometimes it's nice to do, I put paper over it because I could <coughs> rip this if I were uh, not careful. When glue is on a piece of thin paper, the paper becomes vulnerable, right? And so it's easy to rip, it's easy to wrinkle, it's easy to do something you don't want to do. So. I use another piece of paper or even better if I have some wax paper, which is like such a weird thing that nobody uses anymore, but you can buy it where you find aluminum foil and stuff like that. Wax paper is great because it's slick and um, you don't have the same, same uh, risk of ripping your paper. All right, I have my two covers. Where's my other one? Here. Now, Look how thick this is already, right? This is just three sections and it's pretty thick. So I'm gonna caution you about making plans on very large ones of these. I think that you could certainly get away with adding more signatures here if you wanted to, but I wouldn't plan on making one that's like whoop, super long because, or super wide, I should say more accurately, because it's gonna be wonky, all right? And it might not structurally stick together. So I've planned this so that this is flush with this edge. So it doesn't really matter where I start. 
I'm going to apply glue to this and then I'm going to position it as carefully as I possibly can. And this is another spot where a little bit of precision is important. The glue is going here. It's not going anywhere else, just here. Putting this piece of paper here so that I don't get glue where I don't want it. flush against the left side and then there should be a little bit of space at the top and bottom and a little bit of space at the edge. So that is how this is designed. I could have, uh-oh, this isn't super straight, so let me straighten it out before the glue sets up. I could have made this a little bit smaller now that I look at it, but eh, it, it, it works fine, so I'm okay with it. Um, all right flattening this down. This is important for this because this is the only thing that's holding your book block to the cover. So it, it's very important that this is glued down nicely and firmly. Now, if you wanted to make this even stronger or if you had a tab as opposed to a, a continuous page here, you could put an end paper on top of this. And the end paper, you want to design it in the same way so it's a little bit shorter than the paper that's folded over, but you could have that as another layer of something holding this down. For such a small book, I don't think that's necessary at all, but, um, you know, it's just an option. Blue. like enough. Pull this guy out. Now, it's very important that you flatten this out as much as you can and then the vital thing is that your covers are even. So you want to align them so that they're as even as possible. Because if your covers are wonky, you know, it's worse than your pages being slightly wonky. Theoretically, everything should be perfect. There should be no wonky wonk going on here, but you know what? Life isn't perfect. And remember, you had a human cutting all of these materials, not the robot that we desire. And so the human might have uh, not been as precise as possible. You know, it's down in the UPS. Uh, there's a, like a, a bunch of stores where my studio are, is. And I was in the UPS room um, yesterday and they had this kind of tiny guillotine. I'm gonna look into that because that got me all worked up and excited. Um, all right, so look at this. This is a hybrid of an accordion with three pamphlets and it is ready for action, all right? So you have now made your first hybrid. We're gonna make one more um, in the next demonstration, but this has been long enough in this segment, so look for the next one, which will be an accordion with a hard back cover. This is hard. And it's going to have flags. It's going to be really cool, so you're going to love it. All right, my friends, congratulations on your new book, and I will see you next demonstration.